Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Well, today's program was inspired by Evelyn, our employee who is a parrot crazy person. Yay! She has pet parrots and things like that. And we were talking about parrots in North America. And I'm like, well, you know what? That's a really good topic. Uh, people ask about that. Um, and the, the truth is, most parrots that we currently see in the United States are escape pets. Case in point, this picture was taken in uh, the Rio Grande Valley of Texas several years ago on one of my bird watching trips. Um, this is a red crown parrot down in, um, it was in Brownsville, Texas, I believe is where this one was sitting up on top of a power pole. But there have been native bird, parrots to North America. There is currently one native parrot that's still living in North America. And then we have the most famous of them all in my mind, uh, the extinct parrot that lived here in the southern swamps in the southern half of the United States for many years. And we're going to cover all those. But if you live, and you know, like I say, I know I've got a lot of YouTube watchers that are in, uh, I know for in particular, San Diego and in Florida and places like that. And you guys get to see Southern California, Florida and South Texas. You guys get to see parrots flying in the wild. Um, and, and, and a lot of those are, like I said here, like this bird, escape pets. Uh, now, some of those escape pets uh, breed and, and establish colonies that, that become big enough and large enough colonies and successful breeding over time that they're generally accepted uh, as successfully established in North America. Uh, one of those is the Nanday parakeet down in, in South Florida, and I think some of them in California as well. Uh, black fronted parrot, uh, parakeet or uh, black hooded parakeet, I think are some other names. Um, this picture was uh, is from the internet, so I want to make sure to tell you that. I mean, it definitely didn't take this. But I do know a, a good friend of mine who took the last picture who had in-laws that lived in the Tampa region of Florida, and he said they had these birds come to their bird feeders in Florida, and they'd really noisy, raucous birds, and they would come in and clean out bird feeders in a heartbeat down there. So there, again, this is an introduced species. Now, the one parent species that is now very much accepted as uh, uh, had gotten here on its own is the green parakeet and is an established breeder in south in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. We took this picture on a bird watching trip down there uh, years ago and these are green parakeets that are on the side of a church and they are chewing on and flaking off pieces of the bricks uh, as a sodium bicarbonate or a Tums or a Rolades or something to help settle their acidic diet stomach. Um, and they are nibbling on that. And, and these, but these, so these guys are a native parrot that were uh, have bred in northern Mexico uh, in the state of Tamaulipas. Uh, and what we believe happened is over time, whenever they started cutting trees and deforesting uh, their nesting areas in northern Mexico, they naturally moved up into the Rio Grande Valley and established a breeding population down in those areas. And this, these are the green parakeets. So you, if you live in that part of the world, uh, you can see these flying around. Again, parrots are very noisy, uh, and you kind of, they kind of announce their presence flying overhead. And then if they're feeding in, on uh, fruit trees in your neighborhood or anything like that, you know they're there because they are very noisy, very chattery birds. Now, the star, in my opinion, of all the birds, oh, wait a minute, I need to cover one more. We had one more uh, native parrot that used to breed in southeastern Arizona. Nope, there they are. The thick-billed parrot. Now this picture is from the internet. They came from the uh, Sonoran Desert Museum uh, in southeast Arizona. Uh, this, it, these birds are, and they're large, and at one point they were believed they were macaws, but they really aren't. Uh, but they, they still, there are breeding populations of them that exist down in Mexico. And the ones that were successfully breeding in the mountains of southeast Arizona have since been extirpated, long been extirpated, and don't breed there anymore. They have attempted to reintroduce them 
uh, into the mountains south of southeast Arizona in the past. It didn't go very well back in the 80s. Uh, predators, they didn't know how to really defend themselves against the, the goshawks and, the, and cooper's hawks and things. So that, pop, that, that reintroduction project didn't go very well. I understand they're thinking, they're right now working with the Mexican government and uh, with the Fish and Wildlife Service to uh, make another attempt at reintroducing them at higher, higher elevations and maybe into a little better habitat. They learned their, from their last mistakes. So hopefully one day these will be flying in the wild again in, in the United States, in, in the in southeast Arizona, maybe New Mexico and Southern California. We'd love to have them reestablished there, but that hasn't happened yet. So again, those are gone. Now, the one true native parakeet that used to live, or parrot species, but the parakeet that used to fly freely and reproduce and live all across the southern United States, uh, from southern New England and New York all the way down, most commonly in Florida, uh, and then all the way out here to Missouri and the Mississippi River Valleys and the Missouri River Valleys, and we know that they, they bred in this area. Uh, it's the Carolina parakeet. This is my dream bird. Well, a few years ago, whenever they were the uh, sightings, they thought of the ivory-billed woodpecker, and everybody talked about the dream of seeing one of those. Well, this has always been my dream, to see a Carolina parakeet, because where I grew up in the southern swamps of southeastern North Carolina, these birds used to fly freely in huge flocks around there. Now, there's a, you know, obviously from a bird that, that went extinct back in 1918, I think was the last one died in the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, it's hard to know exactly about their numbers and distribution, but we count on accounts from people like John James Audubon and all the, the, the naturalists that explored early in the early days, and they were very noisy and they were hard to miss. But a lot of things happened. We we cut down the forest and, and especially the southern swamps where they bred and they were cavity nesters and, and so we destroyed you know, the habitat in which they lived in. Um, the people collected them for their colorful feathers for ladies' hats. They had people kept them as pets and then of course then they, people shot them because they while they do eat uh, you know native nuts and fruits. Whenever they started planting groves of apples and cherry trees and things like that, they would eat on those, and so they would shoot them for that. So there were lots of reasons why the Carolina parakeet went extinct. Um, I, but again, I just can't imagine. I think the last birds were uh, in the in central Florida around the Lake Okeechobee areas where the last populations were known to exist in the wild, but they've long been gone. So really sad. But we did have one common parakeet species in North America. The others have never been very numerous. Like I said, the one in southeast Arizona, the one in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas, which is there now. Uh, we've never. It, w this is the furthest north known parrot ever. So this bird survived further north than any other parrot species that we know of. So it's a great, great bird. I wish he was alive, but he's not. So it, 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 but this is a great carving. So. You know, an interesting idea for a program, a little out of the ordinary for us. But you know, people ask about you know parrots all the time, and, and people come in here looking for parrots all the time because uh, they see the name and they come in on where are our, where are the birds that we have, and we of course we don't have those here. So it's a great idea for a program. Thank you for that. Send in more ideas if you will. Uh, give us a like, give us a share, and if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Till then, come on, let's talk birds.